Good morning, and this week's block news, fluid typography starts to roll out in Gutenberg. Block themes can now be filtered in your WordPress dashboard. Alan Rickman reads the latest Gutenberg review. James Costa reveals an exciting potential future for full site editing. And in other news, Google rolls out the helpful content update. Let's get newsy. Time for block news. It's news about blocks. One of the biggest complaints I've heard about Gutenberg is the lack of responsive controls. Part of that is being dealt with with the upcoming responsive fluid typography functionality. Here's an example of it on the screen. This is using the CSS clamp property. Essentially, theme authors will be able to set minimum and maximum values for text depending on the viewport size. So you can see as I'm scrolling, as I'm making the window of this uh, screen here smaller, this text down here is actually accordingly getting smaller as well. If I get bigger, then this text grows with it. So the end user doesn't have to do anything in Gutenberg. This is all handled in the theme.json file, which is handled by the theme authors. The fluid typography functionality will be widely rolled out when WordPress 6.1 is released in October. You can get it today though if you install the Gutenberg plugin and use a theme that supports it. Finding block themes is gonna get easier in the future. Currently you can filter when you're adding themes by clicking on feature filter and then coming down here and clicking on this option here which says full site editing option there. In the future, this is going to get even more obvious because this is what it's going to look like uh, from WordPress 6.1. We're going to have this new filter at the top level here, which will say block themes, which will do essentially the same thing, but make it much more visible for you to find block themes. As you probably already know, if you subscribe to this channel and if you don't subscribe and you want to see over 100 videos just on WordPress and Gutenberg, hit that subscribe button now. But if you do subscribe or if you don't subscribe, <laughs> you'll probably know that I'm a huge fan of Gutenberg. Uh, but every week I like to keep an eye on the latest reviews. Now the reviews are definitely getting more positive. In the old days they were pretty much just one or two stars as you can see at the bottom here because Gutenberg has been really controversial but they're definitely getting more positive as the product gets more mature. But we always take the latest review and get Alan Rickman to read it. So bad and disgusting. Using Gutenberg as the default builder for WordPress is useless. Creating loops is very bad. Beautifully read as ever by Alan Rickman, especially the dramatic ending about creating loops is very bad. Actually, I think creating loops is pretty good just in Core Gutenberg right now, and I've done some videos on that if you want to check those out. As is very common with reviews, somebody has gone in and asked for some more details on specifically what Alessandro found difficult, and then there's complete silence, which is pretty much happens all the time with the reviews. There's a terrible feedback loop at, at the moment on WordPress.org where somebody complains about something, somebody goes in and asks for more details or whether they can help, and then there's complete silence. One of the most exciting things to happen last week was an article by James Costa, who's working on the Gutenberg project, where he looked at the full site editor and full site editing process and suggested ways, suggested ways to improve it. And I think some of these are so elegant we really want them today. So I'm just going to talk you through them, but I will also link them in the in the description below to his article. He starts, he breaks his article down into different sections, orientation, block preview, identity, identity and homepage setting, and really, and the library, and really, uh, and also managing menus, um, and really nails some of the issues that I've had with full set editing and some of the feedback I'm hearing about full set editing. Uh, he's put some videos on here, some pot potential ideas behind this. Let's just go through these really quickly. We'll start with orientation. So he says, presently, when a user opens the site editor, they're taken to an instance of the block editor with the homepage preloaded, or more specifically, template that resolved to display the homepage preloaded. The latter nuance is important to note because due to the inherent complexity of the WordPress templating system, it can be a real source of confusion for less technical users. Absolutely right. It's really, really confusing sometimes. And some people don't even know what that that front page does when you first go into the full site editor. Is it the page template? Is it the home page template? It's really confusing to me and I use it every day. He goes on, quite often folks will be required to contemplate the ambiguous index template or understand the page template is applied not only to their home page but to all pages. Neither are the most user-friendly introduction to full site editing. Absolutely 100% agree with that. So instead of dropping them directly into edit mode, we might instead present their site in a navigation frame, a navig navig navigable frame, accompanied by a menu of features where styles and navigation are presented on more appropriate footing next to templates. This isn't a new idea, goes to reference other tickets. And here's this little video of how this might look. I'll just play this for you quickly. Let's make this bigger so you can see it. So on the left, actually, we've got a much clearer way of identifying the sort of template, the 
the structure of how the sites work. We've also got styles in there, which again, styles are really almost impossible to see, to find at the moment in the full site editor, to the point where a lot of people don't even know that you can change styles in the full site editor. I just think this is so much more elegant. Let me just play this again for you if I can get this working. Yeah, here we go. So you can see we've got this frame here with everything we need here, very, very clearly delineated. And then the edit mode, you click on edit mode up here and it goes into the edit mode, but it's a much clearer way of introducing people to the full site editor. He goes on, the combination of the site frame browse mode and one click editing helps to obfus I can't say, ob obfuscate some of the aforementioned confusion around template editing. Now you simply browse to the page you want and click edit. 100% agree with that, that's so much more clear. The whole interface is much more clear in James's prototypes here as well. The lines that exist between template and content still need to be drawn more clearly, but they're best indicated within the editor canvas and they have several issues exploring this. So it's great to know that the team understand that the full site editing experience is kind of confusing at the moment. And that's kind of inherent in the way that it's been built. Another feature of the design tool could be a high level view of where you're able to observe some of the most impactful pages and templates of your site together. Its usefulness becomes apparent as you play around with the various styling options. And here we go. Again, the styles are over on the left. Let me make this bigger for you so you can see it. So we click on browse styles here and we have a much clearer idea of our template structure. And also these are the style variations that again are built into the full site editor already. The functionality is there. It's just they're really hard to find and navigate between. That'd be a huge improvement. He goes on with block previews. One frustrating consequence of styles being a secondary feature to the template editor is that you can often find yourself customizing the appearance of a block without being able to see it on the canvas. Absolutely right. So you can change the styles in the global in the global style setting. You have no idea actually what that's doing. This kind of blind editing really feels awkward, feels really awkward. And because it's encapsulated within template editing, we're forced to consider band-aid solutions like putting previews in the styles panel, which is kind of horrible. In this updated interface, which I'm going to, interface, which I'm going to show you, we can simply sw swap out the side, site frame and replace it with a preview of the block you're editing. This is better not only because it ensures that you always observe, observe the thing you're editing, but also is because it creates a richer, richer preview environment. Maybe you need to see how an image scales down on small screens or how buttons in a row fill the space. Let me play this because you'll be able to see it more clearly. So we change the styles, maybe click on full screen, and are we playing? Let's play this again. Here we go. So you click on blocks. This is, again, you can do this already, but you just don't see what you're doing. You see the actual preview of the button style and you make your changes and you can steer it. Such a huge improvement. Absolutely would be fantastic. Again, people don't know this stuff exists, but it's already there, the functionality. And the editing process is not as elegant as that. The functionality is all there, but the interface is so important in these things. Then he goes on to this section here, which is really interesting, identity and homepage settings. I don't miss the customizer, James says, but one thing it did fairly well was the facilitation of identity and homepage configuration. Absolutely right. In fact, I found an occurrence the other day where I uploaded a logo and I couldn't actually get rid of the logo anymore because it was already set as my logo. The only thing I could do, I think, was delete it or upload a new one, but I couldn't go back to having no logo on my site. Obviously I could replace the block, but the logo still thought it was a logo. Anyway, he says centralized settings panels for these features didn't make their way into the site editor yet, largely because a convenient location for them hasn't presented itself, but it should be possible to edit this site metadata without having to go into the full template post editor mode, 100% agree, and editing the site title block on a granular level. It's also really confusing for people to do that, I think. One option would be to replicate the old customizer interface in the design tool. Let's play this for you. Here's an example of what it might look like. I think people would absolutely, I mean, it's a simple thing, but I th just think it, it feels so familiar. People would absolutely love having that back. And it's just very clear because it abstracts where you put your site logo from the actual design elements. So again, thumbs up from me on that one. Um, then we've got a couple of other things. The library, more complex features like templates, template parts, reusable blocks, patterns, and so on live in the library. Each section therein behaves the same. A thumbnail mosaic details the entities within the selected category and clicking one invokes the edit uh, view for that item. Let's just play this for you. So again, we've got a library here of stuff. And again, you get a nice preview for it with different views possible. Again, I think that would be fantastic. There's a lot of confusion around templates and template parts, which I'm going to cover in a future video. I think this would make it clearer to people. I still think there's issues around it, if I'm honest, but I think it would make it clearer from a UI point of view. And then is this the final thing? Yeah, I think this is the final 
sort of suggesting he's got. Managing menus is a massive issue at the moment for full set editing. It's still kind of clunky. I loved the abstraction of the old menu system. Really didn't have a problem with it. I thought it was beautifully, it was one of the best things about WordPress that it was abstracted from the design. I understand how some people found that confusion confusing. There, so at the moment, full site editing is partly abstracted, but I think there's a move to make it more abstracted. So finally, James says, finally, we have a menu, ma we have menu management. This currently uh, tacked onto the site editor and suffers the same ailments as block styling experience, i.e. you often find yourself editing something without being able to see it on the canvas, which feels very disorientating. To fix this, we can reuse the block styling flow from before, wherein we're selecting a menu to edit. And actually you see that menu preview on the right. And actually we do kind of see the, the edit um, when we're editing, because you kind of edit it in situ. But I think this idea here of almost replicating the old menu system, but having visibility of it kind of would be the best of both worlds for me. We still have some issues that uh, we don't have the ability to have a separate mobile menu to a desktop menu, which is a big issue. And honestly, if we if they crack mega menus, it would be such, there'd be so much love for the new menu system because I still get a lot of people requesting mega, mega menus. And the block editor, if anything, lends itself to creating mega menus. I think things like that would really make people fall in love with the power of this stuff. It's almost like we've got a Ferrari in the garage and somebody's taken the wheels off it. So we need to put the wheels back on it. But I will put a link to that article in the description. It's well worth a read and sort of digesting because if this stuff comes to Gutenberg, it's going to make full site editing so much more elegant. And then in other news, Google have announced they're rolling out a huge update, which is called the Helpful Content Update, which has huge implications for SEO, for artificial intelligence, uh, AI writers, for how you produce content. So it's a huge subject, so I'm not going to cover it today. I might cover it in a future video, but I will put a link to some resources that you might want to check out. But you need to check up on it if you're running a website that's getting traffic from Google. You need to be aware of the Helpful Content Update that's coming your way. So there we go. Thank you so much for watching for this week's block news. If you want to see more block news in the future, hit that subscribe button now. And if you could hit that like button now, it would be fantastic because it really, really, really helps spread the word of the channel. I've now done over 100 videos on WordPress and Gutenberg. So check those out as well. Keep well, and I'll see you soon.